My impassioned search for ultimate meaning or purpose, if there is any, has centered on philosophy of religion, a way of thinking analytically, even critically, about religious concepts, themes, beliefs, arguments. I take seriously arguments for the existence of God and for the non-existence of God, and about properties or traits of God, if there is a God. I am criticized that I am searching with my head, not with my heart, limiting my capacity to experience because of philosophy of religion. Well, the fact is, in searching for ultimate, searching for God, I barely trust my head, much less my heart. No non-analytical way of thinking has ever appealed to me until I encountered the arts. Can art convey understanding, the special kind of understanding for approaching meaning or purpose or God? But art and analytical argument work on different levels. So can art engage philosophy of religion? I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and Closer to Truth is my journey to find out. I am focusing not on the broad relationship between art and religion, but on the narrow relationship between art and philosophy of religion. My interest in the arts as a possible way for approaching meaning or purpose or God comes via a long-term project of the Templeton Religion Trust, TRT, Art Seeking Understanding. A workshop is being held in Grand Rapids, Michigan, attended by philosophers of religion with diverse interests in the arts. To discern if art can engage with philosophy of religion, I'd like a conceptual map, a landscape of categories or ways of thinking how art and philosophy of religion might work together. I begin with the philosopher of religion who developed the TRT project, Christopher Stewart. Chris, how do you see the arts making a contribution broadly to philosophy of religion? One of the sources of skepticism among uh, philosophers of religion, say, uh, about this project is uh, stems from the fact that a lot of philosophy of religion has focused on beliefs, discrete beliefs, or looking at, you know, what are the uh, conditions under which specific beliefs are warranted, mm -hmm. which is an important question. Uh, how do beliefs fit together? Uh, and cohere together. No, there's no inconsistency so in terms of what it was reacting against. That's the appropriate emphasis. But that's now created a big space for mm -hmm. philosophy of religion globally. And in the context, there's a need to get beyond the narrow focus on beliefs. And it is hard to see how, in the context of an aesthetic experience, you know, you would come to believe that something is the case. <laughs> you know, you would come to a discrete belief or that that uh, experience could warrant the belief as opposed to just being generative. Part of what, it will, what, what we hope it will do and what it needs to do really is to break philosophy of religion out of this kind of just fixation on beliefs um, mm -hmm. uh, as the locus of assessment. That emphasis also reflects the primacy of the study of knowledge. So knowledge is an important epistemic good, but if you change the frame a little bit and you talk not so much about knowledge but something like understanding that there are contexts in which you just come to understand something better but in a way that doesn't necessarily uh, translate into oh I have a new belief or uh, uh, I, I now believe this uh, as opposed to that so I think that's something we don't we don't have uh, I mean we've analyzed knowledge quite a bit and we understand you know the structure of how that works but understanding is something that perhaps philosophers of religion mm -hmm. could uh, and epistemologists could sort of analyze more carefully what how does that differ from knowledge and, um, and how would the arts contribute to that focusing on something like understanding versus knowledge okay. specifically right. uh, is a way of 
creating space for understanding what the value, what the cognitive contribution, in a sense, of the arts so, so could would, be. So would then uh, the arts uh, broaden uh, in understanding? It's not just the, the intellectual knowledge, but the yeah. affect, the emotional uh, mm -hmm. components of it, yeah. the, uh, the valence, as we might say, right. of, of the intensity of experiences that that could give new credence mm -hmm. uh, to these other factors other than pure knowledge. There's no question that uh, engagement with the arts can be distortive, right? Just as other forms of persuasion that can be uh, lead to knowledge or, or lead to fixing beliefs that are false, right? But it opens a space. But it opens a space. And How can an idea be embodied and expressed existentially? That becomes part of what warrants the belief, not just the objective logic chopping. The arts are, by its nature, a way to achieve that same kind yeah. of non-propositional right. um, uh, uh, progress yeah. in apprehending an yeah. idea. It's grounding. It grounds the belief. You find yourself having the beliefs, but the experience somehow warrants it, but in a different way. Could the arts provide a kind of understanding not mediated by knowledge or belief? Could the arts ground belief? It's a big idea, which frankly cuts against my personal sense. I not have imagined that belief, at least for me, could be grounded without analytical knowledge. But could it? I meet a distinguished philosopher who counts among his diverse interests the philosophies of both religion and art, Nicholas Wolterstorff. So my connection to philosophy of religion goes like this. I was reared in a religious community and maintained that, a immigrant Dutch reform community in the farm country of southwest Minnesota. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've grown beyond that in many ways, but, but in many ways it remains my core identity. Mm -hmm. So religion has always been part of me. When I was a grad student at Harvard, however, in the mid-50s, Philosophy of religion was basically non-existent. Mm -hmm. um, nobody at Harvard taught philosophy of religion. Harvard was the seedbed then of a logical positivism, right. the view but, that um, the way forward is natural, natural science and everything else is a dead end. Mm -hmm. So that was the atmosphere uh, in the 50s, 60s, early 70s. And then this renaissance began uh, becoming highly sophisticated, broadened, and so forth. So that, that happened in the beginning in the 70s with work, I would say, especially of Al Plantinga and William Alston. Mm -hmm. And it broadened out from there. And I was, I was part of that. Wrote yeah. essays which were part of that movement. When did you meet Al? Oh, um, Al Plantinga yeah. and I met as college students at yeah. Calvin College in 1950, the wow. fall of 1950. Right. And we've not, not just known each other, but been friends right. ever since. So what does that come to? Um, <laughs> Can't count going, that going on, going on 70 years. Wow. For various reasons, I was also interested in worship and liturgy. And I slowly became aware of the fact that we philosophers of religion were focusing almost all our endeavors on religious belief. Uh, under what circumstances is belief in God justified? Mm. What our beliefs, our Christian beliefs about God coherent and consistent and so forth. Whereas for most adherents of most religions, they have beliefs, of course, but for most adherents of most religions, what's central in their religious life is, is worship, liturgy, and so forth. So one of my endeavors in recent years has been to, how shall I put this, to broaden the perspective of us philosophers of religion. I mean, it's, beliefs are important but to focus more broadly on the various dimensions of practice. Yeah. If you focus entirely on religious belief, the relation of art to that may seem sort of difficult and problematic. Yeah. Whereas when you, when you broaden your perspective and you think of religion as including beliefs, but, but including it as a central component of practices, and that's, that's your concern as a philosopher of religion, then the relevance of the arts to philosophy of religion be, sort of just jump out sure. because in every religious practice that I know of, right. the arts, some music, um, visual art, and so forth, play a, play a crucial role. Mm. Are the kinds of questions that you're asking about the arts and religion sufficiently different from questions about the arts uh, in, in terms of normal, non-religious human emotion? I think they're similar. There's no big difference, it seems to me. Well, 
Yes and no. So in, in Eastern Orthodoxy, the icons don't function as objects of beauty to be contemplated and, yeah. and admired and so forth, but they kiss the icons. They venerate them. That's the word they often use, yeah. veneration. So once you see that, then you, then you say, hmm, I wonder if veneration occurs for the rest of us outside of worship. Oh. And I think the way many people stand in front of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., is veneration. But do you get a, a fundamental distinction when it's used in religion? Because the, the, the claim is, from religious groups, that there is a, a passage through those works into a, 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 a non-physical reality of some kind. You're supposed to see through that to a non-physical reality. And, and, and that's, that's a difference, obviously. But once again, we should not, it seems to me, exaggerate the difference because Judaism and Christianity are not just about God mm -hmm. as some spiritual entity and so forth, but they're about things that happened or supposedly happened anyway in the world. So the Byzantines venerate saints in their history. Our American veneration of Lincoln is, is not so different from that, right? Certainly, almost all religions utilize art in their practices, but also certainly the artistic experience in religious and non-religious settings works similarly in the brain. How then to relate the religious experience to the artistic experience? Is it a question of cognition? I ask an expert on cognition and culture, a founder of the cognitive science of religion, Thomas Lawson. I am convinced that the arts are a form of discovery. Uh, I think that the arts actually develop forms of knowledge for us. Uh, they show us surprising aspects of the world. They, they show us possible worlds. In fact, they can humble us. <laughs> so I'm, I'm convinced that the arts as a form of discovery can lead us in all kinds of interesting directions, including religious directions. Philosophy of religion obviously has many different uh, categories. Which are most amenable where arts can make a contribution? Uh, I think that there are two dimensions to our knowledge. I think there's intuitive knowledge and then there's reflective knowledge. I think philosophers of religion and theologians mm -hmm. spend most of their lives, mm -hmm. their emotional lives, on, on reflective thought. Right. But most people in the real world, mm -hmm. whether or not they go to church or participate in, in religious activity, uh, depend primarily on their intuitions. Mm -hmm. Even though I am a philosopher and a scientist and so forth, my sympathies lie yeah. all with the people who oh. are intuitive. And these theologians very often look down on the people in the church. If only they understood theology, then everything would be all right. I don't believe that for a moment. Mm -hmm. I think that what is in fact the case is that these people are living a significant life without access to, the to theology. Theology bores them. They, they don't understand it. Why should they? One of the reasons why I think religion is so successful is that religion has counterintuitive elements because we know experimentally that counterintuitive elements are more memorable <laughs> than intuitive elements. Yeah. How do we go from the arts to intuition to a category of philosophy of religion like belief or like yeah. faith? I think uh, art uh, enables our intuition. I think it also describes our intuition. I also sometimes think it fights our intuitions and says, look, I, I want you to notice this rather than that. So uh, art is, can be very, very complex. It, in a sense, it's a fighter. <laughs> and if you're expecting things to be shaped in this kind of way, I'm going to show you that they might be shaped in this kind of way. Now, come on, listen to, watch it. There are two directions that, that this can go in in philosophy of religion. The one is in terms of the kinds of experiences people have, including religious experiences. And I think that the other is towards the teaching us how to be more reflective. This reflective property can become very, very profound and, and complicated. And it very often leads to, you know, ideas about the gods or God 
and whether there is a God and so forth. I have always thought that the theologians miss too much. <laughs> Art as a form of discovery, showing surprise in the world, showing possible worlds. Art enabling our intuition. Religion as founded on intuition, though religion is counterintuitive and thereby more memorable. Is intuition the nexus between art and philosophy of religion? How to assess ways of thinking that differ from the analytical or propositional? I ask a philosopher from the Eastern Orthodox tradition who is himself also an artist, a painter and a filmmaker, Nathan Jacobs. When we're engaging in art, we're engaging different parts of, you know, different operative cognitive, you know, processes. We're engaging in uh, different types of uh, possible analogies or ways of thinking, right, than we might otherwise when we're doing propositional information, or uh, propositional claims. So it seems like, well, that might that, that might be promising for opening up new ideas, uh, new insights, perhaps new types of experiences. But now, of course, the challenge on the other side is to say, well, if the limitations that uh, we face uh, when, say, reasoning about God are limitations because we're dealing in circumscribed concepts, well, we really haven't escaped those limitations when we move into the arts. Now we might be interacting with the concepts in a different way, you know, talking about red versus perceiving red directly, right? Listening to a sound versus talking about how sound works. The answer is still somewhat open-ended. So Immanuel Kant, he doesn't object that God might reveal himself. He objects to the idea that if God revealed himself, we could recognize that it's God. And the reason largely had to do with the limitations of our concepts. Now, the reason I bring that up is because when it comes to the arts, I think some of the questions that begin to emerge about whether or not they might be conduits for certain types of experiences that might mm -hmm. otherwise be inaccessible mm -hmm. to us, or even you know, taking the Eastern Orthodox concept that um, it's not just humans that can participate in God, but, you know, artifacts can be conduits for God as well. And so through, you know, sacred objects, you might actually have direct experiences of, you know, of God's operations in the world. It's not a sheerly abstract question. It in some ways becomes an experimental, a lived question. There would be valuable research that I could conceive of being done in terms of are there certain sounds or images that elicit the holy? Are there certain things that elicit the demonic, right, that inherently have this menacing quality to them and that are not reducible to just uh, cultural impulses mm -hmm. or a person's prior assumptions? Mm -hmm. Something in, in really deeply intrinsic? Yes. Yeah, I'd be of. really surprised if you could do that. Well, <laughs> you mean surprised that you, if you could find it or yeah. if that was the result of the findings? Right. Well, that's right. Or in, in tying into some reality, but you know, right, I'm, right. I'm prepared to be surprised. Yeah, <laughs> I would be prepared to be surprised too. I shall not be spiriting icons into labs, but I am starting to sense how the arts can help distinguish different ways of thinking thus providing a full constellation of religious beliefs and practices. If so, then is art enlarging philosophy of religion, breaking its analytical boundaries? Could a kind of test be the impact of art on faith? I ask a thinker from a non-analytical tradition. I speak with the continental theologian, Stefan van Erp. I think art is one of the starting points for faith. Art could do all kinds of things with religion. Uh, as you know, in the history of Christianity, the arts have played a very important role. Uh, we're in this wonderful church mm -hmm. here, and you've got these artistic periods which somehow are intertwined with periods in the history of Christian theology. The relationship between arts and theology is about content, but it's not just about content. Uh, the arts have done so much more with faith as well. They can evoke experiences of faith. So in theology, we make this distinction uh, between two aspects of faith. One is called the act of faith, that you're doing it, that you have faith in God, uh, which comes with a certain trust. And the other aspect of faith, it's about content. It's about Christian doctrines. We talk about the resurrection, we talk about creation, we talk about incarnation. So faith is somehow two things. It's doing it, it's an act, and it's content, it's thinking about it. Now something very similar 
is the case with the arts. The arts is something that we experience, that we respond to, we're engaging with it. It does something with us. It's an act. Art also comes with ideas about content. It tells us something about the truth of life and the truth of humanity. So at least there is a family resemblance between the arts and faith, that it does the same thing. Now, here's the exciting thing when we're talking about the arts. If we regard the arts as a starting point for faith, does that mean the arts also have a certain authority when it comes to understanding our faith? Now, why is that an exciting question? Well, the thing is, art comes with play, with a certain independence, um, the artist should be free. And how is that freedom? And how is that sense of playfulness? How can that individuality inform the faith of the church, the faith of a larger community? I think that's a very important question. When we think about whether the art can be a source and whether they have a certain authority and a certain um, convincing quality, uh, when we think about the content and the act of faith. Faith as act and content, art as engagement and ideas. Nice parallel, but is it organic or imposed? Is there a big picture to see? If I had to select one philosopher whose work encompasses art and the philosophy of religion, it would be the British scholar and Anglican priest David Brown. We meet in Nassau, the Bahamas. David, as you look at God's interaction in the world, uh, how does the arts expand that understanding? God is available everywhere um, for us, provided we've got the lenses correctly focused, as it were. And so the potential for interaction is there all the time. Where the difference would come from um, lots of other people who write about theology would be that <clears throat> my insistence that it's too narrow to think that it's just about a Christian context or even just a religious context. The possibility is everywhere. So some scientists experiencing the the beauty of the world, say, or the beauty of a mathematic theorem, might well be having an encounter with God at that point. And we shouldn't demote that as not significant because it's not biblical or something like that. Uh, are you saying that all of the arts uh, contribute to that broad interaction between God and the world? Sometimes the more we say, and if it's everything, it, it's, it's almost it's evolves nothing. to yes, nothing. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, even in the modern world, it's quite intriguing how much might take this form. So if we take a play, perhaps the obvious example is Peter Brook in the way he um, directed plays. So Midsummer Night's Dream becomes a way of realizing it's not just about fairies, it's about there's a larger world there. Or if you take a very different art like ballet, the earliest ballets were actually um, trying to say the 19th century is rather boring. Can't we access a different sort of world? So uh, La Bayadeur has the great dancers in toupees coming down the staircase and heaven coming down into our world. But uh, I don't want to say there's no art uh, where it um, doesn't happen. Adam's photographs, that enables you to see landscape in a different kind of way. How then do we make progress here? I mean, is it just the statement that that um, the arts give us a bigger God, or is there? Is My view would be there could be progress. Um, I think I'm too old to see it, <laughs> but I'm hoping that uh, subsequent generations might begin to think in those terms. To perceive or access what could be ultimate meaning or purpose, there may be other ways, experiential ways, but for me for now, my way is philosophy of religion. And if art can expand philosophy of religion, I'm game. I start with that conceptual map, 
arraying how art and philosophy of religion engage. Here's a landscape of categories or ways of thinking. Art seeking understanding, where understanding differs from knowledge or belief. Veneration of art objects in both secular and religious settings. Art as a fighter, discovering surprise, facilitating intuition. Art as a mediator of direct experience of God. Art as a starting point for faith. Art as a way of interacting with God everywhere. I haven't apostatized. I'm sticking with science and philosophy of religion. Yet I do have fresh appreciation for the arts and for art-seeking understanding. But is it the kind of thing I need in my long quest to get closer to truth? For complete interviews and for further information, please visit closertotruth.com.